Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters <laughs> Top Tips for Success, where each and every day I bring on new business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and have them share their top tips for success with you. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special reunion 2020 episode. What is that? That's when I bring on a guest that I had on the past. I liked him so much, I had to bring him on back. Uh, so today's guest is Jonathan Tuttle, who is founding director over at Revenue Ascend. Uh, Jonathan, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Adam. Glad to be back. Oh, man, excited to get into this episode. I mean, you're, you're my guy, so I, I, I got to know your thoughts on what's exciting in 2020. But before we get into that, um, I, I know, you know, we, we've had a really blessed year and we did really well in the podcast. The audience grew. I don't want to assume that our new listeners caught your, your first episode. So let's just start off with what you're doing over at Revenue Ascend. Sure. Yeah, uh, we're a boutique pet, uh, paid digital ad agency that skills businesses looking for high growth. Uh, we identified a spike looking for lost profit in their current marketing. We researched the current landscape, find opportunities for new business growth. We then executed at a very high level. Uh, what differentiates us is we don't outsource the third world countries, we don't get false promises, and we only hire top proven and senior talent. Um, and additionally, we want to work with the best. So we, we don't take on everyone. We make our potential clients apply to work with us. So this helps us identify if we're a good fit for each other, <clears throat> Excuse me, and don't waste our time as well. And it's it's fascinating to me because a lot of this industry is becoming really competitive, and there's a lot of new agencies that literally watch like a weekend course um, are supposedly experts now. I basically call them charlatans. Uh, so business owners need to ask the right questions, do better research, and not just focus on the price. Uh, is value and growth is what they're really looking for? Um, basically, I see this all the time when I'm shopping the doctors. They'll hire an agency. It's somebody that's probably sitting in the basement. Uh, they watch one week in course, and then they outsource everything to their world country, and then the doctor's like, why didn't I get a result? Well, they just basically get sold on uh, false promise. Um, so if you're looking, as a business owner, you're looking to grow your market share, you want to talk to, like, agencies that actually have a proven track record. Um, also, I don't know if I mentioned this last episode, but uh, I'm also involved in the manufactured uh, housing space. Uh, about 15 years now with the family, we own a couple of communities. Uh, I just actually got back from Louisville trade show, and then the Texas Big Owner Show about a week ago. Uh, when I mean big, there was 225 owners in the, the room with over 110 lots, 110,000 lots, which is about 6 or $7 billion, uh, in value. It's pretty crazy. I also have a pli- uh, PPM coming out, a private placement memorandum uh, for credit investors in the mobile home park space. Uh, basically, I love this space because it's a retirement vehicle and net worth increaser. With technology, it's always changing so fast. You also need something long-term, and this is an industry that actually benefits from, you know, people making, you know, living longer uh, and having less retirement. It's a great vehicle for an investor, but also a place for us to, you know, provide a quality place to live. It's also the lowest failure rate of all real estate, similar to multifamily. Uh, you just basically rent a lot to, to the, the actual homeowners. Uh, and the best part about it is for the investor side, it's almost impossible to get new zoning approval to develop new parks, and it's non-subsidized, meaning taxpayers aren't paying for it. Uh, which creates a credible moat, which means you've got a sub- high su- or a low supply and the demand is very high. Uh, Carlisle Group's into it right now, Blackstone, to the world's largest investment funds. Uh, really got a lot of traction about 20 years ago in Warren Buffett. He's invested billions in this space. He's got uh, the largest home manufacturer, Clayton Homes, and the largest financer, 21st Mortgage. And, of course, Sam Bell, who's on in Chicago, uh, is the second richest person in the state of Illinois. He's the biggest owner of mobile homes in the country. Also, not that I have enough on my plate, I have a, a new e-com star, a store coming out with my partner, Chris. Uh, we'll be making a focal point of retail arbitrage and shop by selling trendy items, backed by AI research, um, and have my, my digital team scaling it. And that's what it all starts with Revenue Ascent. I've got a pretty busy uh, schedule, but that's what I'm doing right now. So um, let's give our audience a little, a couple of tools here. So you mentioned uh, most business owners don't ask the right questions. So I don't want to assume everybody listening knows what the right questions to ask are when hiring an agency like yours. What are, what are some of those things that they should ask? Yeah, I would first ask, like, how big is your team? That's a great question, by the way. I would ask, how is your team? Who have you worked with? Uh, do you outsource? Um, 
things of that, things of that nature where you really just kind of dive in. It's a lot of people will say these false promises. It's crazy. So like, really, who do you work with? How, how can you help them? Uh, and on top of that, are they available for customer service? Because what the biggest frustration I hear from uh, other people is either it's outsourced or when they have a question or concern, the person's not there. So just do your you know due diligence and ask the right questions. And I think those would be great to start with. That's awesome. Um, let's uh, let's switch it up a bit. So um, you're my guy. I mean, what's interesting? What interests you? What excites you in 2020? Oh, I love this. Um, well, as everything gets more consolidated, technology is everyone's starting to get more familiar with it. You really have to focus on uh, what's the problem advantage, meaning a problem that hasn't been solved. It, it, even if you do something significantly better than others, if the problem's already been solved, it will be hard to solve some market. First, you got to look at two things. Is, is the, uh, the market a mass market, which means does the marketplace have the money to solve that problem? Or how painful is that problem? People buy to get out of pain or paid or pay to get the benefit. Um, so basically, if you're not original, find a market that's underserved, offer your services in a different way. So for you, if you're a business owner, is your business offering presenting a new opportunity? Or are you seeing an opportunity that's old, oh, trying to fix a problem that's already been fixed, and it's not the best fit in the market? And the pro- if the problem isn't very painful and people have already had the pain, the, the problem has already been solved. And so people aren't going to pay, pay a premium or they're not going to look at your business. Uh, also, another, you know, being internet and being technology nowadays, do you have a traffic advantage? Meaning, are you stuck on the same exact channel, digital platform with all your competition? Are you able to bring a new opportunity to the channel, or can you be the clear number one, or become the clear number one and two in your marketplace? This will give you a math advantage going forward. So, I think that's something you got to focus on, like, look at other ad channels, not just Facebook. Everyone's on Facebook. Everyone's on Google. So, for us, like, unlike other agencies, we understand that every business has a different challenges and opportunities and not all marketing is one fit all. So in today's hyper world, in digital world, we're hyper connected and we have the ability to be compromised on your business. So as a business owner, what tools are you leveraging online? And so most business owners can't clearly define this. They don't have a marketing plan going forward. Um, And just on the back end of it, we see that the ad costs are going up significantly. There's over 6 million advertisers on Facebook now, which means a few years ago, it was about one third of that. So that means it was like, Blue ocean back then. Now it's like the same people are targeting with the same uh, on the same channel, so your message gets lost. So, uh, so like I said, the multi-channel approach using Google, Facebook, Bing, AdRoll, among other media channels, based on your needs, and using a senior skill team would be uh, that understands the framework would be a good good way of moving forward. Um, yeah, I just and then just understanding psychology biases and how people make buying decisions is best way to use digital marketing. That's awesome. Um, and so uh, going into uh, 2020, um, and, all, and all great advice there, by the way, um, is there any particular, and I know this is, a, this is a slightly a loaded question, but is there any kind of yep. platform out there, and I don't mean that a business should go advertise on right now, because obviously it has to go on their, you know, it has to go on their, on their um, for their niche, obviously. Maybe it makes sense, Facebook, maybe Instagram, maybe YouTube, maybe something else, depending on what they're selling, depending on their market, all that good stuff. But is there any platform right now that just interests you in general? that's on your radar that you haven't maybe explored yeah. quite as far as you and you're just going deeper with. Yeah. And I think it, it actually comes down to, cause the way the algorithms work, it's to get one step back, understand mm-hmm. the psychology and bias and how people make buying decisions could be the differentiator. So like, here's like a method that you can implement on any of the platforms. Um, <clears throat> one of the biggest principles in psychology is when somebody's conditioned to ignore an ad, you wouldn't want to present the message in the form of ad cause that wouldn't work. So content is the way to go. It works with the biases of Facebook and Instagram. Even though I said stay away from that, but you just have to do a little more effort. So you got to keep people want to be engaged on those platforms. So Facebook gives you the, the the advantage to retarget those. And then when you're sending your message on any of these platforms, you want to handle the beliefs of who you're trying to sell, so a buyer services, and you as a leading and trusted expert. And that's what you do with the direct response ad. And so if you can make people aware of the problem and show them that, that how they need to feel. And how the world could their world can be currently wrong, and then show them other people that have shifted to become customers buying to you, and give them that opportunity to shift. You know, your point, our point is to desire people to be in an emotional state to take action, and then frame them the right way to increase the probability of making a sale. So, and then this all go, the, the loaded question part of it. I, I believe in having a multiple business, which means having a buried entry. So if everyone's on Facebook, yeah, you want to use some Facebook, you want to use check out Snapchat, check out 
as well. Check out, I'm going back to Bing because 40% of the internet or 20% of the internet is on Bing and most people are overlooking that. And that's the 40 and up demographics. So if you're looking for a more affluent demographic, Bing is like this untapped. Everyone's on Google, everyone's on that, uh, everything else. Um, so hey, Bing has been, and the funny thing about Bing is that it's been a tap for like a decade, and I crack up because people don't think they use it, and I'm like, that's where I cut my teeth in internet marketing because the traffic right? was so nice. cheap, and oh yeah, no, I, yeah. Bing was my that actually, and this is funny, I've actually never use Google Ads. I've only ever used Bing because I knew what I knew like the the type of people I was trying to reach. What people don't realize is most offices still have Microsoft Internet. So when you go to you might have Apple at yep. home, but when you go to work and you fire yep. up your computer, you're probably firing up a Microsoft and it probably yep. has Bing popping up. Why? Because your compliance allowed it to happen and so but the ads still get through. So it's like that's that's actually the only thing and I always tell people they're like Bing's like, it's like this revelation like what? Like there's another search engine out there, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, and that you're hundred percent right, you're spot on. And the thing is about it, uh, is like people like overlook it, but the thing is, even like you said, like the offices have it, and then people over yep. forty, a lot of times, you're not, they're not doing a competitive analysis. So when they see that I'm there, sure. it's more, and it's already on the computer. Like if they buy an HP, that's it. Dollar, that's literally it. One hundred percent. It's like that's a huge amount of demographic for your more affluent, like you know, whatever yeah. um, uh, audience, and they still use it for business. I'm telling. You. And just to be honest, as a search engine, I kind of like it for certain things. I still use it depending on what I'm looking for because Google and their ads and like the front. I mean, us internet marketers are too good, and Google's too good at selling us stuff. So I'm like, man, sometimes being helps me actually get what I want quicker. Like just to be honest. And that's funny. <laughs> Hilarious. It's hundred percent right though. I mean you just give out your strategy now. <laughs> Oh, man, I've been telling people that for 10 years. Nobody believes me. It doesn't matter. Well, actually, shoot, now my pet, my, my platform's a little larger now, but whatever. <laughs> so, Jonathan, um, I could talk to you all day about this, but uh, we're about out of time. Um, what is, If somebody's listening to this and they want more info on Revenue Ascend or to connect with you on any of your projects, um, what's the best way for them to reach out? Yeah, as I alluded, we have a couple of businesses. Uh, if you're looking for high growth in your business and want to go in 2020, then check out Revenue Ascend to learn how we can potentially help your business. We have creative offerings, and we're not just a done for you, but we also have consulting where we work with the existing team and teach them how to implement best practices. Uh, and if you're an incredible investor, I have my mobile home park fund. So if you're making over 200000 for the last two years or have a million uh, liquid, not including your house, and you want to look for to build wealth, Midwest Park Capital. Midwest Park Capital is my real estate fund. Also, you could use your soft directed for one and place them there. It's a great vehicle. A lot of the, the wealthiest people in the world are in it. Otherwise, you could connect me on social, my personal account on Facebook or Instagram. Really, it's just me. And I know you follow me. It's just me posting, me sitting in like the you know, sporting events, like the first row or two. That's <laughs> my, that's my weakness. I like going to a lot of sporting events. Um, and then also my, it's just Jonathan Tuttle. So you can find me either there. Uh, I just usually post business content on there. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to connect with anybody that's uh, business minded or looking to network. And again, thank you, Adam. Awesome, man. Well, hey, Grand Jonathan, been awesome having you on the show for this reunion Pleasure. 2020 episode. Um, can't wait to have you back again. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. I uh, hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you had fun listening because we had a lot of fun making this for you. Um, if you did, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. If you're more of a YouTube person or you're watching this video right now on YouTube, on our on our channel, Money Matters Top Tips, uh, leave us some comments there. Love to engage. Love to know what you thought about the show. And uh, also what you think about um, is what you think is interesting in 2020 in marketing or otherwise so love to love to engage with you there and uh, Jonathan thanks again for coming on the show thank you talk to you soon have a good day